Hi everyone, the following video is a recording of our Learning the Art of Black and White Fine Art Photography workshop that was held in the Meta Jungle Discord on May 17th. This workshop was hosted by the talented Sejon Sassadhara. In this workshop, Sejon is introducing us to his style of photography and covering various topics under the categories of shooting techniques and post-processing. We want to thank Sejon for taking the time in creating and sharing this incredibly valuable workshop with the whole Meta Jungle community. We hope you learn a lot and enjoy. With that, let's go on ahead and get into it. When it comes to my for my type of photography, it, it, it's about, I always tell my work, workshop uh, participants that we need two things when it comes to my step, which is like vision. Vision is the important thing, and I am going to repeat that, that word a lot during this workshop. And the next thing is patience, because this is not something like we capture and we just simply convert and uh, just simply, uh, and we will get the final output. It, it, it will take time. Sometimes it takes hours, sometimes it takes days. And um, so just think that we are not creating a photograph. It's an art piece which is gonna live forever. And even if you die after, even if you die and go out from this world, still your art is going to stay here. So I, that is what I always think when I create an image. So there is no room for a single uh, mistake. So I put my soul into that. I just simply put my all time into that. Doesn't matter how much time I'm taking. But uh, I, I give a lot of time into that. And I put my all the vision into that. Then I come out with a... Uh, uh, with a uh, with an output, so that is the thing which I keep inside uh, my uh, uh, my mind when I capture an image, when I plan an image, when I capture an image, when I when I create an. Image. So uh, this this workshop is going to be a two sessions. So first first session will be a presentation where I will talk about final photography and uh, black and white photography. Why black and white photography? And uh, what is the uh, what is what I consider when it comes to a photograph, uh, which includes uh, planning the shoot, determining my vision, creating my image, and the final output. That this will be the three sessions uh, in the uh, in the PowerPoint, and after that I will be editing an image in uh, in Lightroom as well as um, uh, in uh, in Photoshop. So uh, let me share my screen now, and uh, we can. Uh, oh, you guys can see me, right? Okay. I hope you guys can see. Yeah, we can see it. I, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, um, so this is this is my entire course. It's called. Uh, I am black and white, must in the art of a dance fan art imaging. Um, so, so let's start it. So I hope you guys are ready for it. So I'm just simply starting it. And so, so I always start with uh, this uh, sentence. It is like when you think about creating a fine art image, pressing the shutter is just a start. So actually, the start of a create start of creating a fine art image is not pressing the shutter. It's it's starting from our home. That's what I always say. Because I am not creating a movement. I just plan my food. If if I am if I'm planning a uh, see if I am if I am thinking of creating an image, I do my research back at home. Uh, because if I am going for a weekend shoot, because I am full time working and I shoot in the weekend, so I start preparing my work my uh, my shoot before at least for before a couple of days um so there is so many things to consider it's like i need to select a subject or a location to shoot and i need to i need to think about the access because access is very important thing when it comes to architecture as well as to uh, any kind of landscape photography because all the landscapes are not uh, accessible for the for all people so as a uh, i plan i just think i just uh, um i mean inquire about the accessibility to the location and then the next important thing i 
uh, I consider is like the direction of the law. Because I am creating a black and white image. So there is no color to support me. So only thing can help me is a good composition, a good subject, and the good light. So light is very important for me. So I always check my direction of the light. So because I always consider the light coming from from the front side of the subject. It uh, it can be from a straight straight away to the subject, or it can be an angle angle all right. So I consider uh, what what time would be the best time to go to that location and uh, an appropriate subject. And I just simply think how much time it will take to reach there. So I I always reach my location at least one hour prior to the shoot. Uh, if it is sunset or sunset, uh, I reach there little early and just simply walk around with my camera, maybe with my mobile camera and just simply take some test shots and uh, just simply see all possible compositions. So. Most of the time, I have a composition in my mind, which I get always from uh, googling, googling about that location or a subject, or seeing the other other people's work. So I just simply start visualizing that that image inside, and I start processing that image inside my brain. So that's why I said I am gonna say that word again and again during this workshop. So I visualize. I visualize the uh, output already uh, before reaching to that location. Then I see the available composition. Sometimes we see, surprisingly, we see some uh, advanced uh, or a different composition, which is much better than we visualize. So all process will start from the start. So that is the things which I always consider uh, before reaching to that location. So, so we reach the location. We then the next thing is uh, looking for a for a appropriate or a best composition which is suitable for my internal vision. So don't think that okay, we, you might be a master of uh, Photoshop and uh, you have a great uh, photoshopping uh, skill. But I always say to my participants that we cannot have bad we cannot save a bad image processing it in Photoshop. So having a good composition is is the is the first thing we need um when it comes to fine art photography so a strong composition is very important it can be it can be very simple minimalistic thing but it need it has to be very clean and we have to avoid all the all the uh, distractions so what we normally doing is we we push the viewer to look into that main subject. So whatever it, okay, we can use some foreground interest or any other any other uh, aspect which will support to the main composition, but we have to remove all the distractions uh, uh, which is not adding to the main image. So that is very important. So try to avoid all the distractions and uh, just come up with a strong image. Um, when it comes to the gear. I I use um, um, Nikon D850, which is a 46 megapixel camera, which is quite good. Um, and um, the, the main other things I use is a, a strong steady tripod, which is very important, and uh, cable release. I use a cable release for, uh, doesn't matter whatever shoot it is, I use always use cable release to remove all the vibrations uh, from the image. Because a strong, a strong sharp image is really important, and so so I use cable release. And then you might be seeing most of the images has um, has a long exposure effect into that. Yeah, I use long exposure, which is very important and very important part of my um, uh, my workflow. Because long exposure always help me to stand out from the reality. Uh, so I am creating an image. I'm not capturing a moment. I am just creating an image, an art piece. So long exposure always helped me to come close to my internal vision, which I have visualized in my uh, uh, in my internal vision. So, so if there is any moving subject 
I mean, like water in the foreground or very fast moving clouds. I always found that that texture of the water or uh, the texture of the clouds are distracting to my my subject. So how do I remove it? I remove it using a long shutter speed. So which will bring to the to the uh, to the image and a very soft and silky smooth effect into the image, which help me to remove all the distraction. And uh, but sometimes we come up with uh, uh, some kind of distraction which cannot be removed. In that in that situations, I try to remove it in the post production or try to put that into the uh, into the or try to put that in shadows in the final output. Which can be done in the post processing as well. But I try to come up with a, a clean image from the field, and then I start processing it in the uh, start processing it in the in the Photoshop. So uh, that is that is what is the small explanation about uh, my planning and utilizing it. Uh, so moving forward, uh, this is some awards which just simply. I, it is not a mandatory for this. So, okay, coming up to the next slide, it is like, what is fine art photography? So now I'm sure that uh, you guys must be uh, waiting to hear what, what is fine art photography for. It's very simple for me. It is like uh, just simply seeing the subject or a, or a scene using my inner eyes. That's what I always say. That is the simplest way to explain it rather than using my eyes i just use my vision vision using my inner eye that's what final photography for me um, so photo uh, when it comes to fine art um, this camera is just a tool which i use to create my uh, my my art piece and rather than making a capturing or recording a scene i'm just simply creating my tool, uh, tool in the sense, uh, my camera as a tool, just to create my art. So, so that leads to a statement that I, my vision is capturing the, the scene before the, before the lens capture. So, so it's all about my vision. Uh, I visualize, I create it using my technical skill. So this Photoshop, uh, skills and the camera, the equipment, everything is just a tool for me to create my internal vision. Uh, so, so that is fine art photography for me. So there is no rule to follow. You just need to. You can create anything which is which you are visualized in your uh, in your in the internal mind. It's a representation of you inside you. Uh, so, so that fine art photography for me just few ways about it. Uh, so then again. Fine art photography is not about black and white. Actually, uh, any 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 art form or any genre of photography can be called as fine art photography. But uh, why black and white? Uh, that's a question. Uh, definitely, people must be thinking uh, thinking when it comes to black and white. I mean, fine art photography. Uh, so it's just very simple. Uh, color depicts reality, and the black and white is an interpretation of reality. So that is it. So in the, in, the, in the early days of photography, photographer had no choice to shoot in shoot in color, but in black and white. But in 1930, uh, we found Kodak uh, film, color film, film uh, which helped us to shoot in uh, shoot in color. That is a start of color photography actually. But black and white photography didn't die because of this visibility. So there are. A few things we we need to we need there are a few situations we need to consider black and white uh, when it comes to the photography which are like see so before that I need to say that learn to see in see monochrome which is very important uh, so uh, so it is like how do how do I explain that it's like the whoever want to become a black and white photographer. He need to face the subject which is suitable for black and white. Uh, and not all the subjects are uh, suitable for black and white. So, so 
so only the vision will help us to see the world in black and white so it is very really important to see the world in black and white because and understand the subject which is suitable for it so how do we do that just utilizing the 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 world in in monochrome uh it's not easy we need so much of practice for that uh, but by practice or using our technical skills slowly slowly we start getting the uh, the the entire result which we have visualized uh, uh, inside our our mind so that is that uh, so i just simply said that there is not all the subjects are suitable for black and white photography this is the perfect example for it you can see some colors in the in the window which is not see when it comes to black and white you can see we just simply remove the colors and that the picture is totally gone so that color has so much of important in that picture so this is totally not a not a subject for a black and white photograph so as this the blue city so the blue color and the other vibrant color has so much of importance in this picture so doesn't matter whatever skill you apply into this image it's never going to come up and it's never going to reach to the same level of a color in it so just some in example which i'm showing and in very nice that blue and that cold and the warm um warm temperature has so much of important things in the image so 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 definitely we will be having we must be having a, a question now so which is suitable for a, which scene is or which which things are suitable for black and white when to when to consider a black and white photograph so i will definitely say the first thing is texture when you when we think about a texture texture if we need to portray or if we need to um, to to show a texture of an image or a subject it is best way to show it in black and white so i'm just going down i mean going forward you can see there is there's an image in the same image convert i mean in black and white and color so you can see it, that person we will the viewer definitely look into that golden light in the color uh, in the color image but when we converted that into black and white i'm sure that your eyes will be following that texture in the foreground or the patterns in the foreground so if you have texture to show in the image it best way the best way to show it in black and white so that's a just a small example which i am simply showing here the same example you can see when this image converted into black and white you can see the shadows and the textures are standing out and it's creating a kind of drama in the image that's another small example okay next thing is tonal contrast so black and white is all about tonal contrast we just need we don't have anything else but tonal contrast everywhere if you can understand tonal contrast it's very easy to work with it so if you know how to play with tones that that's where you have become a successful black and white or fine art photograph so we just explain a little bit for, for those who don't know what is that see it's 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 simply like that when the color converted into black and white they become shades of gray okay light colors will become highlight and the dark color colors will become dark tone the difference between these shades is called tonal contrast okay and uh, it is like the different color has different tones which will be light or shadow i mean will or dark so that the difference is called the tonal contrast okay the, uh, tone uh, tone refer to the degree of lightness or darkness we generally refer to tones as shadows mid tones and highlight you can see at the right the bottom right corner it explain like shadows which is like the left end of the uh, uh, of the of the tone and the mid, the mid mid area is called mid tone and the highlight is the right right end so this is the tone and you can see that black is just simply turning into white and that that difference is called the tonal contrast and also there is a picture just simply representing how the the colors will become different types of 
uh, gray when it convert into black and white um, so i have a small another uh, example as well you can see the different colors over here and when we converted that into black and white you can see all those colors are become a different shades of gray just a small representation to make you guys understand um so you can see so many colors over there and all of them are different so so when we see it, if you are start visualizing those colors into different shades that is the point so another image just to represent how dramatic the black and black and white has become when it convert after the conversion you can see it is making the both has a different mood you know the color picture is also good and the other picture also good but it it has kind of i mean for me it is so dramatic so just showing which is i mean which is the main subject of good subject and what will happen in the different scenarios and in this image you can see the blue color doesn't have anything to do with the image but when it come convert into black and white it has become a different shades of gray you can see all shades of gray here it you can see white with gray shadow highlights and it's creating a kind of drama in, in this image so this is the best way to see is a color image to a black and white image just representing it by seeing it you guys can easily understand it okay light shapes and forms okay we see have light and shape and form so you see light this is also very important uh, to show the contrast uh, if we see for example how to explain it it is like when a light passes through a medium it creates a kind of a shape there and it create kind of forms also there so so for representing that the black and white is the best way to do that so i'm just showing some example see there is something photo is a light and the quality of the light remains the quality of the photo the so black and white draws attention to the shadows shape and forms which created by the light so that's it so i'm sure that this is black and white that's why it's giving a kind of a depth into the image so definitely if you have a situation like this it's the best way to the best way to do is in black and white another small example how the light you can see that if there is no light this picture is nothing the light is creating kind of a pattern over there which is the main heart core i mean main heart of this image moving ahead another image of it is how the light playing the role in that and how we are showing it using the contrast and see if we show this image in color definitely i'm sure that color has color will become a distraction in this image because the, uh, the important part of this image is that that line which is created by the light so i would definitely recommend the black and white in this kind of shot so so just moving ahead and just simply um, just simply moving to fine art and just uh let me explain what is the leading uh, leading principle in the creation of art okay there are three main main, main principles which i follow in my images which the first one is as i as i mentioned earlier it is vision it's all about vision we need a vision especially if we are working on black and white we need a vision we have to see things in black and white doesn't matter if you are seeing vibrant colors you should have a vision that how this image is going to look like if i process it in black and white and so visualize it we have to practice that vision doing it again and again i am sure it is not easy but by practice you will reach to that uh, uh, that point and the next thing is uh, composition composition is like how how we are composing that vision that is also an important thing uh, the next thing is creation creation is like using our tool uh, it is like uh, capturing using our images i mean using our camera using our long exposure technique or uh, motion blur it can be anything and also uh, 
using the tools of uh, uh, Photoshop. I mean, uh, post processing also an important thing in that. Um, just simply moving moving forward, just simply explaining between is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Yeah, as I explained, we are not using it with a, we are we are not seeing it using our eyes. We are seeing it using our inner eyes, which is not visible for others. We have to think different when it comes to, uh, I mean, if we are not seeing it like a normal view, which is, uh, we, if we are using our vision and just simply seeing it different than others, that is called vision. You know? So that's a small explanation about vision and uh, composition, the goal of composition is to express your vision and uh, your emotional response to the thing. You know, so we're just simply expressing that vision uh, and just simply putting that emotion and uh, and just simply simply putting that emotion into that scene that is called composition. So we we show that emotion in that composition. That is that is it. just simply showing some images how how I consider the composition. Uh, these these all are some old images and uh, which I have created uh, during my during the start of my journey. So this is a long exposure uh, image of a stranded ship. The ship is uh, sitting in the, I mean, it is stranded. And uh, so I found very close to uh, where I was sleeping in EA. So when I heard the news about that ship, I just simply, I mean, I just took my car and just simply went there. So I reached there, I found that the okay, ship is there, but um, I was, I found something very missing in the foreground because uh, without that uh, something in the foreground, I found that something is missing. So I was carrying this branch inside my car. I mean, it was kept inside my decade. So I thought to put that branch right in front of it and just simply compose it like that. So this uh, branch in the foreground is acting like a step to my main subject. Since I was putting very, excuse me, very wide, uh, wide perspective. Um, my subject has become very small. So I just balanced it uh, using a foreground interest, which, which I use so much of time. Um, I, I love to use something in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the foreground when it comes to composition. So that's a, the small technique I use uh, most of the time in my composition. Uh, besides that, everything is simple. I use a very long shutter to blur everything, and you can see the light falling and the direction of the light in the picture. Uh, and the, the, it was a very cloudy day, so I managed to blur the, the clouds using the large photo technique. And so, definitely, you guys must be seeing only my subject, which is the program and the brand in the foreground, and my subject and the rest, all the um, the game playing by the light. So that's a small image and the small technique I use. It's very simple. You don't see any complicated com compositions inside my work because the most what I am doing is simplifying the the scene. That's what I do. So I use different techniques like long exposure and removing the subject and minimizing it. All those things just to simplifying it. So all compositions which you guys are going to see is very simple. And another technique with which I always use is the leading line. So uh, you can see many leading lines over here. You can see uh, the river is acting as a leading line and ending into that main subject, which is, which is the tolerance bridge, which is located in Dubai. So my my main subject was the, the bridge, and uh, I used all the uh, all the lines as a leading line entering and ending into that main subject. You can see the edge of the river also acting as a leading line. You can see some fence uh, reaching to that subject. So rest everything I just simply hide in the shadow. So you see only my main subject. So that's what I do. See, you can see the con the tonal contrast playing very big role in in every picture. How to understand the contrast? Con sorry, uh, this is the I mean. And since we are uh, uh, attending so much of uh, uh, spaces, the only thing is coming in my mouth is contract, all those stuff. But actually, I, I was trying to say is contrast. 
so how to create contrast how to understand the contrast and how to create it in your image it's very easy it's like if you have a bright subject keep that in front of a dark background that is a contrast you no know? definitely that high uh, that uh, highlight area will stand out you no know? so that is how we uh, that's how we understand the contrast it, it's same like that a small thing is like if you see have a dark room and we lit a matchbox inside that dark room definitely we will start looking into that matchbox suddenly where the light is you know so that is how that light play in the big room so that is the main technique the small technique i use creating the image it's like everything is dark so where the person need to look i make that area i play with the highlight in those areas so automatically the viewer will get stuck into those areas so if you are able to understand how to create that uh, that contrast you are successful in that so i am doing i, I did every I did the same technique in all my images if in, if you start looking into my images in that point of view you will understand how did i consider uh, uh, how i consider and what is my subject it's obvious you know So if you look into to my images, it's obvious that which is subject, which is which one is the main subject, and what is so where it is going, and uh, because it's really obvious because I simplifying it, removing all the distractions and uh, it's composing it in a minimalistic way. So this is a small method I use. It's like a um, leading line. Rest the next technique is like using the reflection and simplifying everything into that. So This is an this I shot from uh, Alain, uh, the place called Alain, uh, which is in UAE, Abu Dhabi. So <clears throat> when I saw this, I really what is that what attracted me is the reflection. So <clears throat> I just want to, I mean, it's just a simple thing, but it's, it's I love this image a lot. Uh, I don't have so much images like this. Uh, so it is a simple scene, but I just simply played with light, shadows, and the reflection over there. So I'm sure that the viewer will will take a tour in whole area of it, but will end up into that uh, main subject, which is like that those poles and that reflection. So I want the viewer to get a very relaxing and soothing soothing feel or mood when it. uh when uh, when they look into my image that's what i try to if i am not feeling if if as a creator if i am not feeling it those uh, viewers never going to see it or they never going to enjoy it so i never show my images if i am not satisfied with it because if i can if i am not happy then other people never going to like it. so i just simply hide it in inside my heart so So reflection is a tool to, uh, and uh, you can easily frame it uh, in a minimalistic way. But at the same time, I am I am just simply uh, covering all the tonal ranges. You can see the drama in the sky. Um, you can see all the drama happening in all over the picture. But the subject is just cool. So, so I hope you guys also feeling the same. What I am feeling looking into this. Moving, moving forward, and the simple image played with the tones, very simple minimalistic, and uh, use the those uh, tire marks as a leading line uh, going into. Here you can see I have a dark subject, so I just simply place right in front of a white background. You know, so it's standing out. You can see it's so obvious that what is my subject. You know, which is just a small cottage right in front of the image. very simple composition center composition i mean just some compose uh, i place my subject in the center not as i mean i am not following any other rule just simply compose with the, the how the way we see it but i just played with the tones and uh, just simply show the drama in the sky and all this stuff and that's another just simple image uh here also you can see how i made the contrast i place the subject like that human element right in front of the 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 bright water over there so that person is creating a contrast you know the person that figure is black and the water is bright so 
it's creating a contrast over there and very minimalistic scene rest everything is black you know so so he said i just simply prefer everyone to everyone to simplify the subject with the more it it simple the more it will become beautiful uh, we just we can just simply get them it print it in a very big canvas and it, and uh, frame it in you know, a frame it on a wall or a hang it on a wall so that's what i always think i always visualize my image in very big large print so, so i consider all the small small aspects of the image even a small dot which is distracting but it might be visible in the small screen but i consider it as a distraction because i always visualize my image in very big print so that is go- that is gonna if that dot if we print it in the large canvas that dot gonna bother me so there is no room for it and the so moving forward same minimalistic scene shot from kerala it says chinese fishing net another long exposure and uh, simple thing it this is uh, this is a composition from sharja it's a desert and you can see how i used that foreground as a leading line or um, just a just a foreground interest and just simply leading into that uh, main subject which is the mountain line at the behind uh, at the back though uh very old shot and this is an another shot uh, i think alpha collected this image uh, this is from my solo collection uh, very classic composition you can see the bl- that boat is blurred but i just i, just, I can i can take a, a d- different extra shot uh, in lo- uh, long shutter speed and just simply blend it but i decided to keep it like that which is giving a kind of a mood I mean, I could feel that mood, and the light is playing a big role in that. In the tonal contrast, how I managed it, which is making, which is creating a vision flow. We start looking into the boat and go behind the mountains, and again come back to that uh, boat. And there is a vision flow which is circulating over the rest. Everything is in the. I mean, I mean, just just supporting the image. That's how I visualized it when I saw this long boat in this uh, harbor. um moving forward okay repeated lines and patterns which is which is something which i love to photograph uh, i am i was located in uh, dubai so this is not i mean for me it is easy to capture this kind of shot although i traveled almost 5 hours to reach this location this location is called empty quarter um in liva and also all liva uh, so these are huge dunes and I just love the repeated lines and patterns creating a kind of uh, drama in the image and I just played with the uh, with the uh, lights and shadows this shot in early morning using a telephoto i love to shoot in telephoto lenses which come from the sea uh, if we need to bring a mountain line and compress it um, if you want to create layers of the mountain mountain and uh, also Uh, the dune you you have to use a telephoto lens which help you to compress the image and it brings all the layers together and create a kind of a different uh, different mode which we cannot see in in our eyes when we see i mean oh, we can see in a way but uh, when we see it in a, a through a, a telephoto lens it is entirely different Uh, i have an image which captured with 600 nm at that perspective and that uh, image is entirely different than how we see in person so using a telephoto lens really change your perspective uh, especially if you shoot uh, mountains and uh, this kind of uh, dunes and all because if we move forward and uh, walk towards this mount and uh, this dune these are very huge dunes uh if we we think that okay i can see the line and that uh, compressor view from here but the more we walk close to it the perspective changes you know but it looks beautiful from the from far but um, when we get close to it we won't see this light uh, this layer together so we have to use a telephoto lens when it comes to this kind of composition 
and the uh, normal uh, lights and shadows textures i'm just simply processed a bit um uh, and it just simply played with the lights and shadows it just a structure just isolated with some light and on uh, a spoken technique initial shot of the shot uh okay uh, just moving to the compositions of architecture okay um so when it comes to composition architecture is a uh, little different um, because it's all about okay landscape is up to a level uh, entire scene will help you to create a rhythm in the image but when it comes to architecture i loudly say that it's all about i um, mean it's all based on light and absence of light so we we see light uh, highlight in the structure but i would say the important thing in an architecture photography is absence of light so if we don't have a light, if if we if we don't have darkness there is no importance in 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 the lightness so more it gets dark like like the importance of light will become will become a strong that that's the main thing uh, i always follow when it comes to architecture so darkness has so much of importance so we will decide which area will go into shadow and which area will go into highlight and but it 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 it's subjective because we have to stand right between the reality and 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 visualization so it has to be real at the same time but we have to create an image as per our vision so standing in that uh, thin line of reality and uh, that uh, uh, imagination which is really important so it, for standing in that that thin line understanding the light is very important the direction of the light how the light reacts reacts into different surfaces the light reacts different way in a flat surface but it it reacts in different way or it reflects in different way in a curved surface so understanding that is very important if you are going to to do the shape or edit that light in your image understanding that light uh, light is very important how the light is coming how the light is reacting to every different surface and what how it is reflecting so so and uh, which area is going in uh, if the light is coming from a, a right corner which area will go in uh, shadow which area will highlight and uh, uh, the main so so if you have that knowledge you will understand where to place our subject and how it is going to highlight in the in the composition so light and absence of light is the most important thing when it comes to architecture photography um i mean not all the architecture photography my kind of uh, architecture output i mean and structure selecting sub selecting a structure or subject is very important and now we have to find a rhythm on the structure it is not mandatorily a entire uh, need to be an entire building you can choose a small part of a building but we have to find a rhythm in that subject it can be a uniqueness of a build uh, of a building or it it can be a line or it can be pattern or it can be some curves on it or it can be anything but if you can find a rhythm in that structure that is your subject so that is very important so find a rhythm in that find a music music in that or visual flow so uh, it's like it should flow even if it's a um, concrete square or rectangular subject we can see a music in that how we create music we create music putting um, the sound in a next certain point and just uh, that fluctuation is called music no? it's like low pitch and high pitch i don't know how to explain that but uh, uh, but we can found that uh, we can easily find that uh, uh, rhythm in, in the structures as well if we are able to uh, able to look into or uh, listen to those subjects in a way 
so practice that and find those subjects you can see that all around or maybe a perspective you know seeing when if we have a group of buildings if we see from a different perspective that creates a kind of uh, kind of a rhythm in that uh, composition so seeing that rhythm is very important when it comes to architecture and uh, the very basic thing is like make sure all vertical and horizontal lines are aligned that is the main important thing make sure that but not all time in some some uh, uh, sometimes we use that uh, uh, distortion as a uh, composition element we never correct it we know that distortion so there are some images I, I never corrected the distortion of the subject uh, and put it like that only and it came out well. But some some images demand that. Uh, so just moving forward a little fast, I'm just showing some images. See, this is a this is an image of I mean this is just an image of two uh, twin twin towers. It's called twin towers from Dubai, and uh, it's a handheld shot. Uh, I just uh, shot it using 7200. What attracted me is like we never see uh, too. I mean, it's not so often to see. Uh, I mean, in uh, buildings together like this. You no, know, I mean, I mean, I mean, uniform structure. And I can see some repeated lines, and it's creating a kind of rhythm in that. And uh, when I when whenever I see this this structure. i always visualize this composition from the far i shoot it with the 7200 from very far then uh, that helps me to align the buildings like this just a top portion of that image and that uh, metallic rings over there i mean that arcs over there i mean i i always visualize how the light and the light is how the light tra- uh, I mean, transform from one end to another end which i have created during um, a, in my in my post process i saw it in early morning in a in a diffuse light and it has created that light on the on that uh, um, uh, on that uh, uh, top area uh, so just uh, just an example of how i was like to be then subject it and process it reflection long exposure and just a city city view and uh, i just played with each and every building on that structure and just because those light is reacting based on the direction of the image the light is reacting in different way so i just reshaped it you see my post processing technique but how to do that so we need a vision how is this or we can just simply grab it i mean we can simply understand it when the light when we hit on it but it won't be uh, so visible like this Uh, in the raw image, but we just simply alter it. Sometimes we alter it as per our vision, but we never come out uh, from the reality as well. Make uh, as I said uh, that thin line between the reality and the imagination. So I just think I hope I just maintain that in that image. And the reflection, very simple composition uh, reflection. You can see some reflections over there. So being creative, seeing is. it's really important to be creative uh, to make some uh, extraordinary images uh, i'm not saying that this is an extraordinary image but more if you can be creative you can really create some extraordinary images so it's not easy to think creative when it reach when we reach to uh, to a location see i i can uh, i can uh, i can explain a uh, and i can share a small uh, story about this thing i had a, some some different uh, composition in my mind when i went to this this location this building this is called aldar at cortez uh, so it's, it's this 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 structure has a round shape it's, it's like a coin uh, so i just simply shot only half way of it So I I reached to that location. Uh, the security guard never let me to shoot, even from the uh, 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 from the uh, from outside of that uh, that compound. So I decided to go really far, and uh, just sometimes it help us to stand from the far and look into the subject, which help us to be creative. 
so i was seeing it from far and just simply took my 7200 uh, telephoto lens and just simply started seeing it through that lens and um, i just saw this light pole standing over there which really attracted me a lot so the moment when i saw this light pole i just visualized that uh, light just simply distributing to it because that light was not on those time, that time i created that in the photoshop so what i why i am i'm saying it uh, i just started visualizing this output even when i before capturing this image so this divide i just composed it like half way of that image and that that just included that light pole in that image there was an another light pole uh, in the uh, uh, in this area i hope you guys can see right in front of the subject uh, the building i just removed it from the uh, from the shot because i found that that is a distraction so just just to balance balance the image i mean i just put that pole placed it in a in a balance balancing way and just simply created that uh, effect of light uh, light and which is is the main important part of this image i believe and i love this image because of that so sometimes standing out and just thinking creative create make you create some uh, beautiful images so just a small example the, i never followed any any rule in this image just created it just created it what i wish like so vision is an important thing <coughs> also using that condition and you uh, create an image accordingly so well, this is short this is a short uh, 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 this is a shot from a rooftop from a 60 60 floor from a, uh, from a building so that day was a i mean uh, that uh, it was a very little foggy day but not a thick fog we always anticipate very thick fog but uh, i am not lucky with that uh, uh, because whenever i wait for fog fog doesn't come and when i sleep fog comes so that's what happens with me so i don't have any fog images in my portfolio Uh, the usual fog images from dubai uh, so that day i was i was um, waiting for a huge fog it didn't happen so i i i can see some uh, smoke coming out from a hotel i think it's a hotel so it made me felt like a kind of an end of a decade or a, a time and it's a revolution happening so that's what i had in my mind and uh, keeping that thing in my mind i just started processing in white your white everything i just felt i just created it like a like a uh, pencil drawing it's gray you can see only gray and white over there and i just use that condition in this image so one of my favorite image i would say and uh, so you so you we we have to visualize the image based on the condition as well that's why that's why i'm just explaining it symmetry Uh, and you can see the light and it's important to maintain that light uh, in the in the door so you can see see in this image you can understand from where the light is coming and how it is hitting and how it is reacting for example you can see the light is hitting in the dome so you won't see any other lights over there and even i considered it there's a dome hiding here because of this uh, pillar over here the light is hitting there so i left it like that even if you are modifying the light or creating the light in a, in a, in a subject or in a scene it's important that understanding the light and how the where the light hits and how, how it reacts because um, sometimes some part of the uh, the building will go in the in the shadow uh, so we we shouldn't create or create the presence of light in those areas we have to keep it so so this is a simple image of a Uh, of a grand mosque in Abu Dhabi, selecting a unique subject and playing with the lights, which creates a kind of a symphony. Also from Abu Dhabi, I'm just moving a little fast. Uh, okay, distraction. Uh, see, um, I wanted to shoot something else when I reached this location. That technology didn't let me to shoot that. Uh, so. so i just started walking around uh, with my camera on my hand and saw this uh, light pole just creating a kind of a composition uh, you can see the distortion in the the building as well as in the in the 
street lamp. But I just love this composition. But uh, somehow, um, this uh, that light pole was kind of a distraction for me. But I just included it, keeping this thing in my mind that I create a colorful light over there, which is gonna add into this subject. So my vision or my my pre-visualization helped me over there. I visualized that it's gonna look like this. And uh, just composed it that way, and this is the result after the post processing technique. So I created this uh, green light during my post processing, which made that uh, which which started adding to that entire composition, and it it, it has become a, a balancing composition. And the rest everything is like played with the contrast. You can see the direction of the light which is acting here. And the light is bleeding here. It's creating a light, very light shadows over here. You can see some presence of light in the in the sky as well. Rest everything is dark. You can see the light reacting here in the curved surface and how it is creating shadows and highlights over there. So this area will go in shadows only based on the direction of the light. Only the edge will uh, act. I mean, we will see the highlights in the edge. So all small things are things has to be considered uh, even if it is a very simple thing. So uh, that's about this image. Repeated line and uh, creating light on those that. So light has an important role in this image. And so it's a very simple composition. It's a very small corner part of a small corner part of a building. And uh, just composed it with using the 7200 ml, and uh, you can see the, the how the light creates highlights over the, which is the main heart heartbeat of this image. Uh, moving forward, unique structure. I found this light, uh, this uh, this uh, signboard as a distraction, so I decided that I will uh, use that as a colorful uh, menu. I use this color here and uh, which. I hope it is adding to something. It is not acting as a distraction. Uh, so sometimes this kind of techniques also help you to remove and uh, deal with the distraction. <clears throat> um, another unique structure uh, and the light, how the light, if we don't have light and shadows on this structure, this will become a snapshot. So understanding that shadows and highlights is very important. And the direction of the light, and how the curve, how the light reacting to the curve, curve, and how it's creating a gradient. It's all about gradient, you know, and the distribution of light into different areas. Uh, so another beautiful image. I love this image. Uh, conditions. I mean, I would say this is the image which I spent. Uh, very less time in editing because if you see the raw image, it's exactly the same. Like because the condition was very good, I had so much of distraction behind this image, but uh, fog helped me to isolate the structure and it's creating kind of a beautiful mode in this image. Um, so condition shooting in a very good condition is also help you to create beautiful images, minimalistic images. Um, Another beautiful image. I exhibited this image in uh, my last solo uh, solo exhibition in Sharjah. Uh, so I just love it. Not not an NFT uh, until now. Maybe in the future I might come up with a white collection uh, with the only high key images. Maybe a collection of four or five images which is in my mind. My mind. So I had to create one or two images to create, make it as a collection. So it might come in the future. Um, so that is that. And you, at least a few of them might have recognized that this is the same building, but I just simply changed the perspective. I just, uh, it's the same image. This is the same structure, but just simply moved. So sometimes just moving, at 30 degrees from the, the position you are standing, may create a different uh, uh, different perspective or different image. So, so just it's always good to walk around with the, uh, around your subject and see different perspectives. It's very minimal and it's entirely different than the previous image. It's kind of a graphical 
uh, feel i i i get excuse me a graphical feel whenever i see this image i this image was a part of my uh, my uh, last collection uncluttered sobriety and uh, uh, but that was black and white this is, this one has a, a blue tone uh, but that one was uh, uh, black and white pure black and white these both images were part of my collection and uh, this image is owned by uh, that i give, i i send him as a giveaway i think he loving it uh, another image i love to shoot a uh, budget which is which which is a combination of a, a beautiful uh, blurry background and uh, it creates a kind of a beautiful scene uh, repeated lines you find repeated lines uh, in a beautiful shade shadow highlight it's really nice and uh, it's a it's really fun to play with the uh, budget so i shoot uh, so many budget and this is one out of it uh, from uh, abu dhabi Uh, you can see the direction of the light, how I played with the lights, and you can see foreground how it uh, it's creating a balance and all those things. Simple image. This is a third image from the from the same building. Uh, this this is a same building. I mean, this is the another end of that uh, that building. It, when it see, I can see music in this image. You can see this lion is acting as a as a music. I mean, I don't know. Kind of music. You can see the direction of the the uh, the cloud, how it's moving. So we will start looking from the le- from left, and we will go out. It's creating a kind of a visual flow. That is what I felt when I composed this image, and I processed it in that way. So this is all about it. This is this image is all about lines. You can see vertical lines. You can see horizontal lines. You can see the lines of clouds. moving with a creative using long exposure so all those things are adding to this image so very minimal subject another image of a unique structure uh, from abu dhabi so just an end view of a unique structure from uh, dubai how i played it's a new feel image so the very different uh, processing comparing to my recent images <coughs> but very interesting structure i just love it so finding this interesting structure is very important than uh, than, uh, than different structures uh, so i just do so much of research myself uh, <coughs> for finding this unique structure these are not a very tall building these are very small not at all building this very small part of a Uh, this building is a part of autodrome which is which is staying in a corner of that entire area but i did so much of research but actually for this image i didn't do so much of research because uh, one of my friends shot it so i repeated it in a, uh, and uh, just even repeated the composition because i didn't find any different composition from there so i had to repeat it being getting i mean taking inspiration from his shot um uh, another beautiful structure i would say and the bridge shot i think i should come up with a bridge collection i have so many bridge shots so this is also a very unique structure from abu dhabi you can see how i process it uh, um you will understand how how much how much importance I, my vision has when you see before and after images so which i i am coming to that So you will understand how much important, and you will understand why I shoot early morning because you hardly see lights in my image because it will be totally a flat image. The rest, all the lights and the shadows I creating I create in my Photoshop uh, in my post photography. But I will have a pure vision, and without that vision, I cannot come up with uh, this uh, entire result. So. You can see leading lines, how I composed it, and uh, how I divided it. Very simple composition, but very effective and strong. So you can see the lines. How you can see lines, lines, lines everywhere. Uh, another image I called it black mirror. Uh, it's exactly mirror. Uh, see one important thing: uh, reflection 
see why I always uh, I mentioned that in the initial stage that I want my subject to live by the light. So I always prefer the light to come from the uh, from the from the front side of the subject or from the angle of a subject. Uh, why? Because that creates shadows. I always shoot early morning, most of the time early morning or sunset. So that low stack light creates shadows and highlights and also reflection. So uh, in in UAE, most of the time I shoot early morning because I get if I need to get reflection in the subject uh, in the in the composition, I need to shoot uh, early morning. So you can if you guys really love reflection, you can choose your timing based on that. Um, so that is that. Another bridge shot process very differently because it's the same bridge. This is same different. This is the same bridge. Um, so you can see how the lighting con the condition helps me to create a different image. This is the same bridge in the fog, and uh, this is this is in, in a different condition. A different composition, very simple composition, uh, straight away shot, and uh, and this is the after process paint. In the city sky, uh, city state shot process date. You can see different processing in the different buildings everywhere. Different in the different part of the Burj Khalifa, how I process it, and you can see how much. Uh, important the shadows have and the highlight. That's it. Moving forward. Okay. So the first uh, step of my processing is like determining the vision. It's like applying the vision uh, into the photograph. So I just simply explain how I applied, how how much role uh, my vision has uh, in a in a photograph. So I'm just simply showing the worst scenario or a worst conditions I sought and uh, how I came up with uh, with a beautiful uh, result. So I'm gonna show some before and after shots of it. So this is the this is the raw image and uh, you can see how I came up with uh, uh, with a result. So you can see it's a handheld shot and uh, no long exposure technique applied here. You cannot see any light. I can hardly see the light uh, in the images. But in the in the main subject, how I made the light, or how I altered the lights or, or tones in the in the in the specific part of the image. So this is the this is the main. Uh, this, this is showing the importance of vision in a in a in in fine art photography or in black and white photography. Maybe another <coughs> another uh, result. You can see the long exposure uh, shot of a, of that bridge and how I processed it. Because my main subject is the uh, is is the is the bridge, the top part of the bridge. So I just simply played, I just simply placed the light on that specific area, and rest I put uh, rest all the things went into the shadows. Uh, so. Because of the darkness, there is so much of importance for the light. So that is what I just simply meant. I mentioned it earlier as well. The light, the darkness has so much of importance that that make the that in, that make the uh, importance of uh, light so high. Um, so another uh, before and after comparison. Uh, so. I, you guys might be thinking that my images are extra bright. Yeah, I am. It's not extra bright, but I when I shoot my raw image, I make sure that I am capturing all the details. So I make sure that I am not clipping in the right hand side, but I make sure that I am getting all the details from shadows as well as from highlights. So I can darken the image. That is that is not an issue, but I cannot uh, uh, brighten it. So much. So I always make sure that <coughs> I am getting all the details from my shot, and I darken the image, the areas where I need to darken. 
<clears throat> that is what i do when i capture the image and you cannot see any hardcore contrast in my raw images because of um, getting this result only i always shoot in sunset or sunrise early sunrise so i don't get any uh, any hardcore highlights which i cannot control in the post processing so i can create uh, highlights as uh, how i want how i wish like it so i can create it uh, easily in the post processing so it's entirely like kind of a flat image to a contrasty high dark contrasty image that is why that is what my method uh another simple handheld shot why i am showing this image is like uh, when i reached that location the security stopped me he said i won't let you shoot but luckily it was early morning it was a time for them to change the shift so he said you have 10 minutes to keep the shift change so you can use that uh, for shooting it so i never had any time to uh, to compose or a time to uh, put my camera tripod and my cables and all so then just simply took some handheld shots and i had pure uh, uh, vision inside my brain that how it is going to look like in my uh, after the post processing uh, very dark contrast image you can see uh, in the right hand side so this is the just simple raw image to Uh, dark contrasty uh, um, contrasty uh, result you can uh, i won't say this is a very good image uh, but i'm just simply showing that how i come up with the result what i had is just a raw image and lots of vision a, a small method so so you can if you have a strong uh, editing skill and a vision you can come up with a good result even from a from a bad i mean decently bad image uh, another before and after comparison it's like this is the image which i which i captured and uh, this is the research so the old image and a different process and i'm sure that if i ca- if i process this image now that result will be entirely different because i am learning new things and uh, my perspective also changing and uh, uh, my knowledge of light also changing so it might be i mean that is it might be the entirely different but just simply showing how that raw and uh, how it is looks like after after applying my my vision and the technique so okay uh, coming to the to workflow uh this uh, my workflow includes uh, raw optimization and con- conver- conversion that happen in uh, in lightroom and uh, rest thing is understanding selections and masks it's like okay when it comes to selection it's like what i normally do is i create selection of uh, different uh, areas it's like if i have an image with a with a with a, with a building and okay let's say a, a street lamp so uh, what i do is i separate all these elements uh, so using select it like sky will be an a, a selection <clears throat> my subject like a light pole for example light pole and a building and foreground these all i will just simply divide it i mean i just divide it all these things and just do the processing differently because i never do global adjustment into an image and my sky would be dark my subject the specific part of my subject would be bright and another if we have another subject that would be a, because that would be that shape of that subject would be different so the light reacts in a different way so i have to process in a different way in a different technique so i divide it i mean i just simply separate it with a selection and if i have foreground or water i just simply separate it because my foreground i just use as a bright part of the image so i cannot apply global adjustment to that area so i just simply divide different areas based on my vision so then the next second step is 
is that it's like understanding the selection so i just decide in that point i decide that how many selections i have to make and how many marks i need to do so that is the second section the select the the next step is uh, this blending what i do is i create three versions of the image it's like dark and dark neutral overexposed and underexposed image and i just simply blend three images uh, using a uh, layer mask so that is the next section it's like selective merging and masking next is like creating present we again more again we shape the shape the light or alter the tone so so the creating present is called that so i just again alter the tone sometimes i darken some areas or sometimes i brighten some areas next thing is tonal range so once i have done all these things it's almost ready then after that i check the tonal range i make sure that my image is uh, my image is covering all the tonal range okay before saying that i have to explain how i divided it is it's not me divided it it's like it's called zone system which is created by ansel adam so ansel adam what he did is he create he divided in into 11 parts 0 is it is from 0 to 10 so 0 is total dark total black and 10 is total bright so we play between this 0 and 10 so i make sure that my image is not touching 10 or also not touching zero okay sometimes most of the time my image cover uh, the tone of zero which is pure black sometimes it touches a uh, tonal range number 10 which is pure white but i make sure that it is not covering so many areas because the tonal number 10 means i am losing the detail over there so i make sure that because i is covering to tonal number 10 i am using the data or details from the image which really affects when it when we go to uh, printing so that is the section the tonal range that section in that section i make sure that my image is covering the tonal range if it is not covering i don't need to worry about uh, tonal dark tones because my images are most of the time dark but i have to make sure that my image is totally dark and it's not covering the highlight so i make sure that at least it's covering tonal number 7 8 or 8 or 9 make sure that most of the time i make sure that it's covering tonal number 9 so we have a technique to check that we have a tool to check that which is like a uh, silver pro where we can check the tonal tones how where it is covering and how much it is covering so that is the next step that the, the and after after checking the tonal range the the final step is like finishing touches where we make sure that we don't have any spots and all those things in the images and uh, if we have any uh, any banding banding uh, in the in the in any areas because uh, sometimes that that drastic change of tone creates banding so i i do my adjustment to remove that banding if we have any noise we remove that if we have any spot we remove that if we have any uh, um, i mean sometimes um, i mean sometimes we we end up with some halo in the images we remove that all those uh, finishing touching things will uh, come in that uh, final uh, area so once we have done that we can save that image for uh, um, for web as well as for a higher resolution so this is the small workflow i'm just moving forward okay i'm just simply explaining how to understand the selection so this is just simply think that these are some subjects in the in the uh, in the city and you can see some light is coming from from this area okay i hope you guys can see the spacer so you can see how the light is reacting to different uh, different shapes it's like it is entirely different the light on the, the flat surface but when it's hitting the light is hitting in the in the curved surface it is creating a kind of kind of gradation out there the hard that uh, the density of the light is high and it's gradating when it comes to right side so as here 
on that uh, uh, on that uh, that cake it's a nearly different you can see the more highlights here and it's distributing into 30 into 36 degrees also and directly different reaction right and we have different planes over here and it has it is it might be hexagon or octagon i don't know what is that so so we have a shape different planes over here the light is passing in different ways so we have more highlights here and but it's not that highlighted in this area even this area and this area is little we can see the presence of light here but it's in little dark then comparing to this this this, this and this and this so so if we are start start creating or start altering this tone this different areas has different tone so different different process you no know? if we apply light in the in uh, globally into uh, if we apply some adjustment globally into this image it's going to affect equally into different areas you no know? it will affect to the background it will affect to entire area where we don't have light so what we do is we just understand that uh, that areas where the light is reacting and create some selection system over there that is that is called understanding the and uh, the selection so <coughs> how many how many uh, <coughs> how many selections we can make here okay just roughly i can say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 whatever it is but if we go more close to that if we decided to create a selection based on the light uh let me go down just simply roughly it will be this many selection based on the planes over there but if we you need to create micro contrast or uh, as per the light if you need to alter the tone we have to create this many selections over there so you can see selection number 1 here two here it is like just this part of it and 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 you can see there is difference in the tone so i create a different selection here send the whole area because it's single frame and <clears throat> i don't forget this edge we can see the presence of light so 11 is here here is 12 form 12 is here which is a reflection of it don't forget the reflection because if the light is reacting that will be visible in the reflection as well if we forget to do the alteration in the reflection it will look like a, a, i mean it, it it is not right and like we have to do the same adjustment in the reflection as well so we have to consider that as a selection and the 13 is here the again the reflection 14 is here the reflection of this plane 15 is here the reflection of this plane reflection is here which is the reflection of this plane i mean this is the 16th selection so if i create selection in this uh, this image i will create this many selection okay i'm just i mean this is i might not but we can consider this many selection based on the tone because tones are different in different degree so understanding that tone is entirely different uh, and that, i mean understanding that tone is definitely a different thing i mean very important step i'm um, coming into my image i just simply showing how much selection i have made in this image it is like i made a selection for the main subject which is my my ship that uh, vessel and the sky because i need to make the sky darker and i made a selection for the uh, the branch and the reflection the shadow i mean shadow of that branch I mean, because that also important if we if we do any 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 selection we have to uh, we have to do that the main if we are doing any adjustment we have to do that adjustment in the in the dark in the shadows so i made a selection of that you might have noticed that i didn't make the i didn't make a selection for uh, for the water because i can i can merge all the selection and just simply invert that selection which create a selection of this for them so i just saved time there just doing that so there is no selection for the water so i just simply merge the selection of uh, uh, 
you should uh, you should uh, merge all the selection together and just simply invert it so it will uh, it will create a selection of that foreground so that is that and this is the final result of it i mean, I mean this is just showing the final result so as this i started with this image and uh, i just simply showing how many selections i have made and i have selection for the sky i have selection for this area of the uh, uh, building because it's a curved surface so the light reacts in different ways and selection of the entire building different way. and i have selection for the top part of the metro station and uh, and and this is the result after applying some uh, I'm just um after creating some lights on those uh, buildings. Coming back, I have a selection. I mean, coming to this image, I have selection for uh, the top part of the of the bridge and the sky and the bottom part of the of the bridge uh, because that has a different tone and um, sky and the strings and the water. That's it. Because I need to brighten the water. If you see the final result, I need to brighten this area. I need to brighten this area. I need to brighten. I do the adjustment here, and also some highlights on the strings. So and I need to darken the sky. So I made this selection and blended it together. It's like blended the water area from the bright image, and uh, and uh, I I made the highlights from the and took it from the. From the from the bright image and darken it, blending it with the dark image, and just combined it all together, and this is the result. So moving forward, self emerging and mask. So the next step is so now you know what what is the selections are and you have the selections over there. Now once you have made this is the toughest part uh, in the process because I use I make selections using pen tool. And uh, because pen tool gives me the, uh, very very good separation, uh, so I use most of the time I use pen tool. Ninety eight percentage percentage of the time I use pen tool, and only two percent uh, two percentage of the time I use luminosity mask. But um, somehow I, I found that uh, when it comes to architecture, especially uh, pen tool gives me uh, great separation and. Uh, Uh, help me to help me to work accurately. So I use pen tool, and it takes a little time to create all the selections. But once you have done the in the, in the selection, it is amazingly good because we have complete control in your image. That if you want to make it dark, you can do it, but it's never gonna affect to other areas because we are controlling it using the selection. so we are just simply isolating specific areas using selection so whatever uh, adjustments we are doing it affects only into those areas it affects never affects to those uh, other areas so we will have control in each and every corner of the image so that is that's why i use selections for creating and uh, uh, altering my image so next step is once we have the selection next thing is just merging it with a, with the different uh, different versions of the image as i mentioned earlier i create three versions of the image it's like one very bright image over exposed image one neutral like just a black and white conversion of that image it's like neutral and just very dark image and exposed image still it is not dark but i will show how to create how to make it further darker but for an initial blending we use this three version of this images and uh, uh, and they simply blend it together so i'm just simply showing what what how i use this image see branch and the foreground which i have taken from the overexposed image the subject and some part of the water has came from the neutral version of the image the sky and that edge of that that merging part of the water has came from and the reflection of the shadow i mean the shadow uh, of the branches everything came from the dark image and they just simply 
blended it together and this is the initial blending result of that image so i just simply darkened that that uh, sky blended that uh, dark image with the sky i mean in the sky and also i made some highlights over here which I, which came from the bright image and uh, i just simply blended my dark areas i mean the shadows using the dark image so this is the initial blend result of it okay moving forward then the next step is once you have uh, blend result the next step is creating presence a creating presence is like a is is just enhancing the subject in your image by giving more luminosity or giving more depth it can be like uh, just altering the tone and brightening it or uh, just simply darkening some image to to achieve the result by altering tonal ranges in different part of the image individually with the help of with the help of selection that's what i mentioned individually we are not applying that in, that uh, that uh, uh that adjustments in a different and in, in globally into that image we are just using we are doing it individually by using the by using the help of by doing the help of selection so selections are very important it's tough but it's important so i'm just simply showing a just a representation of how i create presence of what what i'm referring Uh, about uh, presence over here so you can see the light presence over here you know these are the presence we create in the subject just highlight so just create a highlight need different in different shape so this is i mean basically my workflow is workflow is very simple i am not using so much of tools in photoshop i have a very simple method and uh, but it it takes little time so if you can understand these small little things you can easily come up with beautiful images uh, but need little little patience so i am just uh, uh, going to show some uh, step by step by uh, i mean just how my image progress when i when i when i create presence in the image just simply put some light in different areas using the selection this is this is how it looks like and just simply put some light over the some area and this is the main substance i did do anything i just simply darken the image i just simply made some highlights in some areas this is the result okay uh, okay i was explaining about tonal ranges this is the tonal range and this is how it looks like so it's divided into uh, into 11 parts you can see zero percentage is like a pure black and uh, 100 percent is like pure white so it's divided into 10 so this is how when it comes loop and histogram here you can see zero is dark and 10 is pure white so it's divided like this and when it go when goes when we go to that uh, uh, that, that uh, third party software whenever we touch on this area uh, that the tone will uh, uh, reflect i mean the presence of this tone will be shown as hash in the image so in that way you can, we can understand where that the tones are present in the image you know so that is the next step so i'm just simply showing one image and this is simply representing i'm just simply uh, noting or just simply showing where my tones are uh, present in the image so this is the image and you can see how the where the tones are present you can see the pure black is zero with the tone number zero which is which is pure black which is present over here okay and the next is the next step of gray which is present here the tonal number 1 and 2 is here three is here even you can see two and three here and tonal number 4 is here and 5 is here 6 is 7 and it's just simply progressing up to 9 you can see this is the main important part of the image as well as here you can see tonal number 8 here it 5 6 8 here so definitely there is some highlight so automatically people will look at here and the next important part is bright part is here 
so automatically the viewer uh, you were the the viewer uh, the look will shift to this area so we, in that way using those stones we created a kind of visual flow over here and rest everything is, is in dark but not pure dark you can see some different tones here it's not dark it's different shades of gray which is adding to it so so my in in the first look the image looks like dark but it's not dark it's covering all the tonals but the the, the most most of the image is 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 shifted or uh, is falling into dark areas but the main subject or main area of the image is covering covering all the tones so definitely the viewer will look into those areas so this is how we work on the work with the tones so so that is that this is the final bit then after that we we'll do the finishing touches we remove the banding spots and hot pixels halo and the white lines whatever uh, is uh, is visible in the images and toning the next thing is toning toning is like not not the tone which i explained just now it is like you can see some uh, color toning into the images which i i hardly do my image but if you like a cold tone or if you like to take your image into uh, to warm tones you can do it we have tool available in uh, in the silver fx book uh, so you can do that i hardly use that some people use the uh, cpi tool uh, 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 for the image so all those stuff is prepared which is done in this section so this is my uh, overall uh, uh, overall workflow so that is that and uh, so this is the this is the end of uh, uh, end of uh, uh, my my powerpoint now i think we can go to an image and then just simply edit as fast i i hope you guys are uh, not not both uh, so i'm just going fast to first and just editing one image in my lightroom and uh, just simply show you how i create and uh, how i create image so this is a raw image uh, let me refresh uh, this image i always start from uh, i'm just going fast fast because it's been uh, quite long that's why um this is the raw image so i always start with um, uh, you can see why i am editing this image because it makes uh um this image is uh, looks like uh, uh, i mean i why i took this image because uh, you can already see lights and shadows in this image and if i do some uh, processing it will help you guys to understand more further so that's why i am using this image um uh, otherwise when you see your my my raw images most of the time it's uh, flat so you never find the shadows and highlights over there uh, so so let me let me uh, let me show my workflow uh, in lightroom um i always start with a, a white balance um, and if i need to edit white balance i can use the preset because it's a tick file that's why it's not showing otherwise you will see or the uh, preset uh, white balance otherwise you can play around manually here like um, um, going to the warm side and uh, cold side and warm side whatever it is uh, so i just is not doing anything much just happy with it or you can play around with that um, and uh, you can see my my histogram over here it's covering all the tonal ranges over here uh, it's a page one one by eight of the king base of 50 and uh, 16 mm and uh, because of that i have some distortions but uh, distortions but i am not going to correct the distortion because i love that distortion in that the person standing also which is which is myself um uh, so i composed it that way because that human element is giving a life to the image at the same time it's it's creating a scale because if the person is not here we don't understand the size of this image how big it is and uh, so uh, a human element is creating a kind of scale 
and uh, it helps the person uh, the viewer to understand how big the structure is uh, so that is that and um, uh, you can see some distractions over here which will, which, which will be removed in the post uh so there is no way of removing it in the uh, during shooting so i thought to keep it like this and uh, we'll remove it in the post post, post production um so uh, when it comes to normal basic basic uh, editing i just simply rather than export one thing i always uh, use rather than using exposure if i need to increase exposure i never touch on exposure i understand that i just simply go and use the white I just simply increase it. Uh, in this case, I don't think so. We need something like that. So I'm just simply playing around. If you want to take it further, I just simply put on the white, and uh, you can play with the shadows if you want. I'm just playing a little bit. I'm just putting the highlights little down, and black point is fine. I um, like you play around. I will hardly work on that. and clarity i never touch behave i never touch vibrance i in sometimes i just they simply increase late till be the touch because vibrance uh, and mute the i mean just simply activate the muter slide so i just simply play around with that late till bit that's what i always when just touch it with it and the tones and when i come down to detail it's like um sharpening when it comes sharpening see if it's a raw file you will see the sharpening uh, they they have a setting like 35 or something but have a sweet point is like i keep my radius always zero zero it's not possible zero but uh, it's like the minimum it's like 0.5 is the minimum and uh, i play around with the uh, amount and the details but uh, uh, until i i started getting some noise over here so sometimes it is really helps to bring so much of details without creating noise so <clears throat> i always find that sweet point of 31 and detail 31.05 is a sweet point most of the time i use and masking uh when it comes to masking you can because i just want to sharpen that uh, uh, area of my main su subject but not the sky so for removing that i can just simply separate it holding the alt key and just simply slide in the slider so it just simply whatever is visible in white is sharpening whatever is dark is not sharpening so i'm just ending a speed for i'm okay with that so it's doing the sharpening little bit um and noise reduction most of the time i want that to be when it comes to profile uh, lens correction i remove the chromatic abrasion and add the profile correction and uh, and rest everything i do manually it's like uh, if, if there is any distortion i cut it and i can come down if if i have any vertical line straight and if i need to do it straight and i can play around with the vertical slider in this it is not required so uh, you can play around with it horizontal and the rotation accentuation on the thing so most of the time i correct the vertical using this and you can use this guided line method as well you can put the guided line so that software software will do it on job So most of the time that works with me <clears throat> so that is that's it once i'm done with that okay uh, one more time calibration so sometimes i play with this blue slider and just simply increase the blue slider with help me to to play get a beautiful uh, saturation without bleeding it out so this helps sometimes so i play around with this slider you guys can do as per you, as as like your choice so i'm not doing anything that much now so i'm okay with it uh once i have done with that i just export it just simply export export okay in a specific folder and you can rename it and uh, 
16 uh, bit, uh, which is this is important, and the solution is 300 DPA and export it as six point. Okay, so this is what I do. So we have a, an editor tip file over there. Then where we we will open that tip file in Photoshop. So I can see Photoshop here. Yeah, Photoshop. So uh, we have a raw file here. So you guys must be remembering that uh, the next step is what what was that creating the selection. So I just as per the light, you can you guys can easily understand how many selection we need to do. So you can already see the uh, see the uh, highlights over there. So based on that highlight, just think about that. Uh, uh, that picture of procession which I show, which which I showed just now, like that the cubes, the uh, the hexagon and all. Based on the light, we can create selection. However, let me let me put a brush and uh, okay, let me put the brush. I just simply draw it here so you guys can understand. Uh, okay, I will definitely make selection based on the light. So the light is coming from this direction, right? You guys can see the light is coming from this direction. So, so, <clears throat> so all the gradations are happening from left to right. So just understand that. So based on that, I will create a selection here because the tones are different here. And I will create a selection here up to here, the whole part. So two, and you can see the light present here. It's gradating from here to here. So I just created a selection here, which is become third selection. And the entire part is very easy. It's easily visible here, so it's a fourth selection. And this is the another entire part. I made it like this selection, but I don't want this dark area so i create a different selection for it and then simply subtract that thing from the uh, from the main subject from the from this uh, overall uh, selection so that has become a, another selection this is selection number 7 and the human element that is selection number 8 and i will create a selection for entire sky which will become selection number nine okay so uh, so this is entire selection whatever selections i have made for this image so <clears throat> how to make selection i made a mistake here Okay, so we so we we understood the selections and we need to create selection. So I use selection for pen tool. I mean using pen tool and just simply create. I hope you guys know how to use pen tool. If you don't know, go to YouTube and find, uh, just simply learn it. Okay. Basic method. You can create selection. Uh, use your pen tool. I mean learn how to use pen tool from youtube i'm never going to show that here so okay but there is few things to be ma to be noted in this uh, uh, in this section so once you created your selection you create a selection here and when it comes to the uh, feather radius make sure note that your radius should be zero why zero because Whatever adjustments you are doing inside this selection shouldn't go out from that selection. So I don't let any feathering to go out uh, my adjustment out from the selection. That's why I always keep my feathering zero, which is really important. Okay, that is the one thing to be uh, to be mentioned about selection. And using your pen tool, you can create all the selections uh, end to end, all the stuff. So I'm not going to show that here. But uh, there is something called uh, whatever selections you are making. Once you have done the selection, 
you have to save that selection. So once you have done the selection, it will become like a channel here. It creates a channel here. You can that channel. See if you press on this this channel, you can see this is a selection, and okay that that will be visible there, and you can use it later as well. Okay, okay. How to make that channel? It always automatically comes here, but once you deselect it, it will disappear from there. So for keeping it, you have to keep that selection uh, saved for the future use. So how to do that? For example, if I made a selection here, I need to save it. I can go to select, save selection. I can give a name here. For example, I made a name here, and just simply saved it. Okay, and I, I deselected it. Put in command D, and if I need to go and do the same thing, I can go and do the reselect. Or if you are doing it later, you can go and do the load selection. Go down. You can see selection here, which I saved just now. Just press it. Just press OK. It's here. At the same time, you can see we we have created a channel here. You can see the name here. Okay. So this is how. And we are playing with this channel. Going back. So okay. Now sometimes when you do different kind of pictures, you will end up seeing. uh different selections where which has okay for example you need to combine two selections together i have a selection i have a selection for this area uh one second okay i have a selection for this area here and my another selection is here selection number 2 i need to combine two selections together so we cannot create a selection uh, in one shot like i pen tool if i started pen tool from here it will end up here we need to close it here then only it will become a selection so i cannot create a selection in from the both areas so there is a technique to combine those two selections so the first technique is like as of now we have selection for this uh, entire area here <coughs> so so there is something called edit in one second edit in cube mask mode so whatever selection you are creating here for example i i create a selection i am doing a selection here now top one okay when you go to edit in cube mask mode you press it besides the selection it will high i mean it will overlay a color it might be different in your your photoshop okay so it it will overlay the other areas and show only this area okay so so this area is is the selection and the rest areas are not selected so if you need to select this area so what will happen is if you if you are using the brush tool b for brush that is the short key for it you, there is a technique to add selection to that Like if you have a brush and you just brush it here with black paint or sorry, white paint, this area will start with I uh, mean start becoming the part of this selection. You can see that. Now you go out from the editing cube mask mode. It is added to the same selection. You know, so this area has become same selection here. So when I'm going back to the cube mask mode. you can see wherever i am brushing with the white brush it is adding to the main that selection see i am going back it has become a selection now you are happy with the selection you can go save the selection again do another name for it press it and command d if you can load it you can load this selection select load selection you can see that selection here in this way you can you can uh, combine some selection i don't want that selection to be here because i'm just deleting it uh this one to delete channel okay i am deleting this channel as well okay so okay but whatever i have done with the brush tool which is not usable for us so instead of doing brushing it 
what i am going to do is for example i did i loaded a selection here okay i just want to combine this area with this this selection both two selections combine i need to combine it so i have a selection for that area here which is like uh, maybe in the small selection bottom left bottom let's say this one okay i need to combine this and this selection together so what i will going to do is i load this selection i went to the quick mask mode rather than brushing it this area i already have a selection saved here so i loaded that selection i just loaded that selection okay now i told you whatever you brush here with the white that will be added to this selection right so you can do the brush stroke here but rather the rather doing in it with brush what i am going to do is i am going to click mask mode i loaded the selection here top one okay rather than brushing it what i am going to do i am going to fill it like a bit fill that is the one method to reach there otherwise what i use you can hold the shift and backspace you will reach to shift and just you can fill that white color over there so automatically this two selection has become one selection if you go back one and two this two selection has become <coughs> one selection and now you can save that selection you can save like uh, any name like uh, combined top and bottom whatever you can give it you can see channel came here i just command d for deselecting it holding the control key and pressing on that uh, com, uh, that channel will create a selection that channel will load rather than going select load selection select load selection and selecting that selection rather than doing that you can do it straight away here holding the control or command and pressing on the command on the the selection whatever selection it is so if if i need to load this selection hold the command key or co control key press clicking on that channel will will load that and that selection if i select this one sorry command d if i select command and this one it will select that area okay so uh so so that is the one method to combine the selection okay sometimes we don't have selection saved here we have only uh, load selection top one we have only one selection saved here but we don't have any other selection but we have to combine the selection with the, the some other area how to do that because we don't have any selection saved here so we have a technique over there okay what i am going to do is i am going to edit quick mask mode before uh, and i can rather brushing it what i do is rather doing that way uh, because just need to avoid that red overlay so what i am going to do is i just simply invert this selection okay so what 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 has happened besides this this top area rest everything got selected now we go to the edit in quick mask mode only those area will be in red now it's very easy to create or combine the selection i will go to pen tool i just go start creating selection just like that i'm just uh, randomly selecting because i'm just representing it what time it is selected i create a selection radius 0 now because i we inverted it so we are going to add this selection to the rather than putting white filling white what i am going to do is i am going to fill black okay we need to re re do the reverse i mean opposite of what we have done earlier because because only those areas every area is selected beside this area row right so we have to do the filling in the opposite way so once we come back you can see besides this and this area rest everything is selected 
now if we need to select only this area what we need to do go to select invert that area what do what has happened only this and this area has selected you can save that selection as any name whatever name you can give save and you can use it as a standard will come here and you you can use it as a in, in the in the future for the future use so this is about selection uh this method is useful when it comes to some things for example if we have some uh, image i will show you some one image uh, after this uh, and i will explain it how it is useful this technique is useful when it when it when when it uh, comes to making selections using editing quick mark mode so that's about selection so we have selection now we just need to start blending the image so what we need to do is we have to create different versions of the uh, of the color image like under exposed and over exposed and neutral exposed image so in this case i just need under and over exposed image only because i just need very dark image and very bright image only that i am going to use so i am going to create two copy of it how to do that i can selected that uh, color image i just press silver effects pro you can use this panel otherwise go to filter okay you need to select one image you go to filter next selection silver effects pro press here otherwise straight away click here it will start creating i just it will, that third party silver effects pro uh, uh, software will load uh, later okay now oh, okay now we have uh, preset here we have presets of nature uh, neutral sorry under exposed and over exposed i am never going to touch on anything else just uh, uh, select your neutral press okay okay if when we press okay it will save as a new layer it will come here see so now i can rename it nice and and for neutral okay so we have two copies already here this is how we create put the, this layer off go to the color image again do the same process and select the preset under expose so the under exposed image will load here as a as a uh, as a new layer you can rename it under exposed image. okay so now so we have under and over exposed image now we don't have we don't need our color image our raw image is raw image is saved here if something happens in the in the in the future we can come back to the original one here so that's why i'm keeping here keeping a copy here same as we have under and over exposed here i never going to straight away work on this image rather doing it i am going to copy this both layers sorry command j for copying it or control j i am just made it brought it here down i just made this two layers off i need i am going to start with my dark image and i need to bring my highlights to the specific part of the image right that's what i need to do so by using the selection okay so how to do that we need to we need my select our selection to loaded and using our blending method Uh, layer mask we we just blend it with the over exposed image okay we going to bring this highlight to the dark image that's what we going to do so how to do that we need to use layer mask over here layer mask so those who don't know what is layer mask it's like a just a mask we whatever we brush if you go and brush with black color it will help to reveal the whatever is down you is a just black reveals and white conceals that's what it says so just reveal from the bottom so but at the same time it's not doing anything with the main image okay the layer we just simply altering it that is what it's all about so this is layer mask so if you have done anything wrong with it we can any time change your brush to brush to white and just just simply redo it so we can remove it 
okay so if we do if we bring our it doesn't matter how accurate you do with your brush tool press x for changing the brush color it is never gonna be perfect right it's never gonna be perfect if you do it with the brush so i do the different method what i do is i use a a, a tool called gradient g for gradient tool press g you will see some uh, um, some options here this is called linear gradient so you always select linear gradient a gradient tool and there is an important thing to be noted in my workflow we always use a uh, option called black to transparent not black to white i use black to transparent so there is lot of advantages with that so i use black to transparent and you can use different types of gradient tool here so gradient tool it works like that if if you activate gradient tool you just click and drag it create gradient see you can see it started from black and just gradating to gray that is what gradient tool now you understood what what i am going to do right already you got an idea that what i am going to do that's all this is it see this is what happens when we work with gradient tool so this is linear gradient tool we have different gradient tool see? if you if you use this one if you click and drag what it is doing is my computer is too slow man see it creates a kind of gradient here it's dark in center and it's distributing to 360 degrees so maybe we have conditions we have situations we come we where we use this gradient tool and we have another one which i use is reflective gradient tool it is reflective you click and drag with that it's like it reflects to it gradient to both sides if you do angular see you can see it reflects to both sides and that uh, the hard area will be center and it reflects to both sides this is gradient tool so i use gradient tool to do that but even if i use gradient tool and i try to move into background if i try to create gradient it's going to affect everywhere right see for example i am coming back If I'm using gradient tool globally, it's going to affect everywhere. If I use gradient tool here, it's going to affect everywhere. So that's why I said we need selection, which will help us to concentrate on only specific areas. So we have based on that we we created selections here. Okay, select, load, select. We have this many selections here. So I am going to start uh, load a selection, selection top one. so if you can do if you if you go to that original color you can see the gradient is starting from here and it's distributing to those areas so i am going to do the same thing here so you can see dark image here i have a layer mask and i put my bright image here down so whatever i do with the black color that area will will reveal the bottom area that's what i'm going to do so i just going to click and drag here you can see what it has happened if i if you press alt and click on the layer mask you can see what is happened here it is pure dark here and it is gradiated into this area okay so i am doing redoing it just to understand i just uh, reducing the opacity little bit to 68 percentage i'm just clicking and dragging to the direction where the light is passing i'm sorry i i need to select the layer mask make sure the brush color is black i'm just clicking and dragging it create a gradient tool i can do redo it one more time but it's reaching to this area so much i just can see that this is a curve area but i don't want the light to work here so how to recover it i as i mentioned earlier change the brush color to white and just redo from reverse so you can recover that light from there so i, I did it over over did it so i just uh, put in the opacity little down just redoing it from both side just to make it natural 
so i'm okay with that so you can see before and it put i just made the presence of light here before and after before and after okay now you can do the same thing with uh, this area we have a selection for that area so i hope i have the selection so two yeah so when you come to this area you can see some highlights here so i can be a little creative there so i'm just zooming in that area i'm just clicking and dragging i am just this way this time i'm selecting the reflective gradient just clicking and dragging only the edge and opacity taking it to pop to 80 percent and clicking and dragging you can see how i made the um, i am not happy with that how i made the only in that edge only in that edge blended you can do any time you can do it command z if it is not working command z and just do it clicking and dragging i'm okay with that but i can see it's bleeding it here so i just reselecting it i am doing it in the opposite direction opacity down i'm just recovering it from there and I'm just recovering it from this area so you can see before after before after how to check before and after just press on the shift key and click on the layer mask it will disable the layer mask and click again it will enable so i just made the presence here so as i can do it load selection the next one here i am doing the same thing here clicking and dragging i am sorry select the layer mask make sure the light black the color is black clicking and dragging i'm just doing it from the both side i'm just doing it little fast we can play around i don't want to test it okay and um, this uh, i am not happy with it. yeah in yeah, that loading the selection again select no Middle, clicking and dragging, make sure X for changing the brush tool. Select, no selection. Middle, okay. Here also we can see some highlights. So we can creatively click and drag something like this. Press X for changing the brush tool. I'm doing it in opposite direction. Okay, now you can see the presence of light here. Just press click and you can see before, after, before and after. Now I am loading the another selection. Um, okay, that's not the okay. same. Um, load selection. Okay, this is the okay. I will do one thing. I'll go. Okay, I selected this one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, clicking and dragging. Okay. Now you can see it is affecting to this shadow area as well. Okay. What I'm going to do? I'm going to. I have a selection for this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I am gonna fill it with black, which is like just simply brushing it out. Not here. Fill it with black. Not black. I'm gonna fill it with white. So just remove it. So now you can see how I made the contrast. So I just removed it. If you need to do that, I just removed it from there. So you can see it was like this. So what what happened is when we applied that uh, that uh, light, I mean that selection, 
see when i applied that uh, adjustment it affected to the shadow as well so this area has become flat so how i re- recovered that shadow i had a selection i loaded that selection uh in the shadow okay what i did is i just removed that uh, that uh, adjustment from that shadow area either i can use the same gradient tool press the linear tool and just click and drag uh, with uh, the white brush so you can see how drastically it has changed and that contrast i brought that contrast back by bringing bringing that shadow back so as i am just continuing it select load selection just continuing it here on this one i go okay i can thing with this here the mouse black i did the same thing this time i am going to click and drag in the opposite direction just to recover the shadow i am keeping the light there so with a single layer you have you did the basic adjustment here okay you can see this was before but after this was before this was after now i just need to show the direction of the light just to bring in some highlights right behind the um, uh, that uh, human element so i have a selection for it this mean and i did the same thing here just using the reflective gradient very little shadow opacity make sure you are in layer mask special you uh, have black paint brush i'm just doing it like this just you can see the direction of the light now but it little over so i'm just doing it back bringing it back now just a bit just a touch now you can see automatically you will understand how the light is coming and then you can play around uh, see this is how i did and you can see the process of light only at the back because i understand the light right at the back from the back i don't know what happened here yeah so i just simply play around so you can do that now so this is the this is our blended result i just simply apply this layer mask apply layer mask i just simply merge it down so and i just rename it like blended result okay blended result okay so i am not done with this this is the may uh, that uh, basic blending i have done now what i need to do i need to do some more adjustments with that i need to make the dark the sky more darker so we have an underexposed image here which is dark but it's not that dark enough i need to make uh, make that sky more darker uh, than this so what do we do in that kind of situation so there is a technique called double expo- double process so how to do that it's like using the same layer i create two extra layers one extra layer and create make that layer more darker and just blend that uh, that layer with the sky so i will get a, a dark thing so you can do the same thing with brightening as well if you want to brighten more one area specifically you can do the same process it's called double process so i do it a lot uh, just polishing my image so i'm going to do that for that what i do is i just simply copy i mean create two three layers two extra layers one is like just for before and after i'm just put it off and i use it 
at the end before just for the before and after comparison so this is the image i am going to blend so i just put the layer mask on it put it off i just activated the bottom image i just went to image adjustment and curve i just darken the sky do, do, do not look at anywhere but on the sky because that is the only area you need to darken so i'm just darkening the sky now i am okay with it because okay i know it affected globally but i am i am okay with it because i have a selection for the sky so i activated the that layer with the layer mask i activated the layer mask now i need to blend the sky with the, the bottom layer so what i do is i activated the layer mask i have a selection of sky loading the sky select the sky press okay okay now i can just simply select the gradient tool press the g you can drag the top make sure your uh, brush is black and you can even go for the 100 percentage and just simply clicking and dragging i am this would be easy see now you can see how my subject is popping up just i just did a small adjustment okay now i am okay with the sky the darkness of the sky and because we we had a selection it never affected any other places but only in the sky you can see here it never affected any other places so this is how created my uh, sky darken sky but i am going to do some more adjustments with that i am going to do select the reflective gradient tool here change the brush color to white put the opacity little down like 25 i am going to do from here to here just to make sure that the light is coming from this direction so you guys can see the light is coming from this direction just clicking and dragging from both direction you can play around with that okay so we have a direction of the light here and uh, um, we have a dark sky our subject is popping up i am pretty happy with it if you are happy just apply layer mask blur down now you have a top layer just for before it was like this before it was like this you can see how drastically it has changed before after before after uh so i'm okay with it almost okay with it i'm happy with the image and now once you are happy you can play around as much as you want you can darken specific areas Uh, using the same technique i'm not using a, any tools but only this gradient tool okay once you are okay with it the next step is removing uh, i mean i am going to do the finishing touches now okay before doing the finishing touches i need to check the tone okay for that i am i am going to delete this layer uh, i am going to take take this image to silver effects pro and just want to check the tone tonal ranges if it is covering it or what uh, okay i'm just um, coming back to the image view here you can see loop loop and help histogram so if you click on it you can see See the uh, the tones are divided into the eleven. So you can touch if you touch on zero, you can see where the zeros are visible. So whatever is showing, these are the areas. The tonal number zero is is um, um, active. I mean located. The tonal number one, which is in this is area two, three, four, five, six is present. Seven is present. Eight is present. See, you can see when it when we go more forward to bright areas, the presence is coming less, 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 less. Because I just 
just uh, um, concentrating on the areas where the person has to look at. Okay, so the six is here, seven is here, eight is here, nine is here, ten is here. If ten is not visible, I'm totally okay with it. Okay, even if I need to bring the ten tunnel number ten, I will bring may maybe bring it into this area or this area. How how I achieve it by doing the double processing method. I will show you that. Okay, you show you saw the double processing just for darkening the sky. Now I can do the opposite of it just to make it bright. That uh, some area uh, just to brighten some area using the same method. So I'm just creating two layers, one for before and after, one for a layer mask. Put the layer mask and just actually deactivated it. Selected the bottom layer. Go to image adjustment curve. Rather than darkening it, I am gonna improve it. I mean, increase the lightning. Press OK. Activated the layer, main layer. Activated the layer mask. I just want to increase the area here. I mean, brighten the only this part of the area. So I am just loading that selection. Not this one. Select load selection. Okay. Now what I am going to do is. I am gonna zoom this area. I'm gonna select gradient tool, pressing gray, linear gradient. I'm gonna click and drag only this area. Click and drag. Make sure your blush color is black because mine was white. I think what happened there. See, you can see it's getting bright here. If you go to layer mask, you can see it's getting white here. Okay. Okay, you can see before. You can see after. I don't know if it is visible before and after. I think it's visible. So I just open I and mean, brighten only that area using the double processing method. I am applying the layer mask, bringing it down, and just checking it again for the taunt. If I go to loop and histogram, you touch on nine, nine is visible, 10 is still not visible. But I'm okay with it. See, earlier nine was missing, I guess, but now nine has come into that, but it's not, 10 is not visible, but it's okay. If you are, if you are not happy with, you can do the double processing again. And just increase the, in that way, you can achieve that uh, tone, whatever is missing in the picture. So this is how it is. And now I'm okay with the toning as well. Everything is okay. Now I just need to do the uh, finishing touches. So if you go to this area, you can see some lines over there at the edges. See, you can see some edges uh, over there. See, that's only because of the selections, uh, the, uh, the select. See, you can see that this over there. So uh, we need to remove all these things uh, first. Before that, we need to remove this uh, over there. So what I can do is I just for a safer side I create a copy of it. Now for a see I just simply selecting this area. I'm just filling it with a uh, content aware. Pressing OK. So let's see how it is going to work. Uh, because the computer is doing its own work. That's it. Photoshop is okay. It did a pretty good job, I guess. I can do it again. I'm just uh, using a laser tool and just selecting the area, I'm just pressing it, filling it with the content of You can use any method to remove it. I'm just using the basic method. Okay, that is not working. If it is not working, you might need to use a layer and make sure that I make you go to the cloning tool, make sure that all layers are activated, I make samples from all layers, and you can just 
on is around selecting or I create like 10. Maybe press picking a sample from here, just simply doing it from here. We are overdoing it, always do it. So, here I'm just doing you can take your own time. I don't know my welcome tablet is acting weird. Okay, somehow, like this. This is not anyways clean, but if you have to clean it as much as you can. I am just doing it fast fast. You take your time and just simply remove it. And uh, here also you have to remove this one, this person, and just like this. Okay, that's gone. So here's the image. Okay, this is this is that uh, final touches, and this is and this adjust. This is very weird. If we print it, this will be very visible, uh, like very badly. So what I do is I I have a, already have a layer here, new layer. So I'm not doing anything with the main layer. I just do the clone stamp tool, just press it and just, I can clone it around, but if you do it, if you clone it using this area, it is gonna damage everything, right? So what I am gonna do is, I am gonna load the selection, I'm going to load the selection. For example, I'm going to load the selection. So, let command H for uh, hiding the selection. So, sorry. Okay. I hide the selection. I zoomed this area. Made a small brush, press, uh, taken a sample from here, I started cloning it. So, mm -hmm. since it is selected, it is never going to go out from the selection, and you can easily remove it all these lines. The more you work on this uh, small thing, more your p image will look clean. You can see how clean it is. Because my brush is big, that's why it's visible. But if you use a small brush, it will be very clean. You can see how beautiful it is and how clean it is. Once you are done, when you zoom, you can see the dark lines at the edge. So just invert that selection, selection, hide the selection. Do the same thing here, pressing the sample, taking the sample from the other side, and just simply do it here. So yes. I zoom it and just simply check everywhere if we are lacking or if we, are, if we have anything at the edges. You can see here the edge looks very dirty. So we have to clean all these things even here and invert it and the edges clean the edges here as well. So that is the cleaning thing and uh, banding. For removing banding, I just what I do is I just create a layer, clone layer, I mean, uh, just a stamp layer. I just go to filter. I just add some noise. Uniform noise, monochrome, press OK. So it brings some noise. Here it is so much of noise. We don't need to add that much. Filter, noise, and noise. Uniform less and uh, amount should be like maybe one or two would be fine. So, so we added very little noise and we just removed all that banding from it. You know? It all disappeared. You can see before, see you can see banding here. I don't know if you guys can see it. After that, adding that noise, all the banding disappeared. <coughs> Okay, so this is how I do banding. I mean, remove the banding. 
the next thing is what that's all that's all i do with my major and uh, uh, so we go up this is this is what we start with this is the end this is the start this is the end that's all thank you very much any questions please okay so so that's it so that concludes the workshop i hope you guys enjoyed you guys learned something little bit thanks everyone have a good day